So hash maps and hash sets work because underneath them they use something called the hash table. Now they have nothing to do with hash browns or anything similar, but what a hash table does is that it uses the hashing algorithm to do what it needs to do. Um, the big thing is that we get something based on um, the key value, not where it is in the table. We need to be able to grab something from the table using the key value, whatever it can, and we need to be able to do it on average in constant time. Notice that that's a big thing in all italics over there, on average constant time. It's actually not always constant time, on average it's constant time. Now we run into some difficulties here. Uh, there's only one way we know to do constant time uh, uh, retrieval and insertion. And by insertion, I mean, which are, and that's the set and get operations in an array list. Um, now that's not really going to work because those use um, the um, those use index as the location. So instead, what we do is we kind of cheat and we use an array anyway. And uh, we're going to and you'll see how that how that cheating works. Uh, specifically, what we do is that imagine that we've got an infinitely large table, infinitely large table. And the idea here is, well, we want to take a key. And what we could do is we could take that key and transform it into any index that we wanted in this infinitely large array. Okay, so basically, remember, the key here can be an integer, in which case, just transforming it into an index in this infinitely large array. Um, that takes no... Tr if I, you want index 2 billion and 70, great. Or you want key uh, 2 billion and 70, Vindy, great, you're going to find that item at index 2 billion and 70, and you can get it in constant time just, just like that, right? That makes sense. You want to set, you want to establish a key value pairing of 2 billion and 70 is, is equal to apple? Great. Just go, you just go to index two set, uh, 2 billion and 70 and put apple right there. Okay, but obviously we run into an issue. And that issue is, what if you want to do it the other way around? What if you want to put uh, Apple, or rather, what if you want to put 2 billion 70 into index Apple? Well, we don't have index Apple. So what we're going to do is use something called a hash code calculator. We're going to use a hash function to generate something called a hash code. And then that will give us the index that we want to put it in. So in other words, this basically the hash function transforms anything into a number. Now here's the big thing for it, it needs to be repeatable, right? If I, if I throw uh, apple into the hash function, I better be sure to get the same index each time, or I better be sure to get the same hash code each time, otherwise I'll be, t be told, look on I in aisle A, look in aisle 7 for the apple, look in aisle 12, eh, that won't work if I, if I get a different answer each time I ask. Okay? Um, so, you might have noticed a bit, a bit of a flaw here, by the way. Um, I don't have infinite size on my computer, right? There is no infinite sized array on my computer. There's no room to hold infinite memory. So, how do we get around that? Well, it's actually... So, we solve one primary issue right there, by the way. I take a key. How do I use, basically, uh, a key? Uh, to store values. You don't. Use an index. You cheat. And the way you cheat is that basically we're going to use the get set operations uh, of an array and we're going to use indices instead of keys even though I even though we were totally lying and said we were just going to use keys. Uh, we take the key, we transform it using a constant time function into an appropriate index. Okay. But that's for an infinite size array. What if I don't have an infinite size? What if I'm not like some kind of super god with a supercomputer? Uh, in that case, what we're going to do is that we're just going to take your index calculation and mod it by the array that you actually have. So we'll use modular arithmetic to place it in there. Now that leads us to a new issue, which is basically I could get this key, calculate index, and say it needs to go to index uh, index blah mod 10. Sorry, mod blah m1 mod 10, because the, the table we have is size 10. And so we'll go to index 1. And then we'll take an, another key, say banana, and say, hey, I want to put this other thing associated with banana 
there. We do the index calculation. It comes up with some number that also ends it, uh, in 1. And so that will also go to index 1 for modding by 10 because the table size is 10. And that will give us what we call collision, which we'll talk about in a later. And But that's... Once we get to collision, basically almost everything gets solved except for that. So consider the Huffman codes that we've you, we've looked at before. Um, if you're taking the graduate course, we didn't look at Huffman codes. But the idea here is not too hard. If basically our if we're trying to basically just if we're just storing text that only has ASCII values, we could just use a table of 100 size 128 like we were doing in the previous example in that optional video I threw up there and then use its Unicode value be the location of the table. It's almost like I knew this was coming up or something. Okay, But instead, what if we were using all 65,000 possible Unicode characters? Right? If you were to assume, on average, 100 characters were being used, 100 different characters were being used, you, we could just instead use a table of 200 characters and compute the index by saying, hey, Rather than using a table of 65,000, because that would waste a lot of space, and on average, we're going to use 200 different types of characters. Okay? Makes sense? Different type of characters, not total characters. 65,000, right? Rather than creating an array of 65,000, um, we're going to create an array of size 200. And we'll figure out where to put it by saying, hey, let's take the value, the Unicode value, and mod it by 200. And that will give us the index we actually want to store it at. However, the issue, it come, we come with this issue about collisions, right? Again, so I'm just repeating myself here about that, but I think re-emphasizing it is pretty good. So, for instance, if we've got this snippet of text over here, mañana, tomorrow, I'll finish my program. A very common feeling, by the way. Uh, here is the hexadecimal Unicode value for the right parentheses, which is 41. And for the small n with the tilde, that's 241. They end. They will be indexed to the same location, which is 41 in the table, and that will be a collision. So we got to figure out how to deal with those collisions as well. Okay. So. Okay. So to summarize, before we move any any forward about how we generate the hash codes. Okay. A hash table is an array. But it's an array we use, we've got special thing we've got special things for. I don't know why I can't back up over here, right? And what we do is that we have this big problem. Okay, so how do I take anything and and use it as an index in this array in this in this array? And the answer is well, we're going to use a, a function that turns anything given it into it into a number. Okay, um, that's called our hash function. Okay, but if it can be a number, any number, then our table has to be infinitely big. Okay, so to deal with that problem, we're going to use modular arithmetic. We're going to create an array of some other size and mod it by this amount. And that way we can use the get set methods of an array, the get set operations rather, not methods. So you do, all, do, do insertion and removal and insertion and retrieval in constant time. And figure out what something is it at at constant time. And we'll use modular arithmetic to make sure that we don't have infinite memory and we can actually, you know, fit things into a small array. Oh, and what happens if we basically we uh, our array gets too big? We'll resize it. Just like we did with an array list. The only thing we issue we have left is something called collisions. Uh, which is what if we want to map two things to the same location? So how do we get a hash code? That will be in our next video.